that is how I feel. Isāvāsaninam sarvam. Everything belongs to God. That's it, man. Under the influence of māyā, we are thinking, and this is my problem. Just like, suppose this kusha, where from the wood has come? Has anybody produced wood? Who has produced? It is God's property. Is it not? You are a barrister, you can't judge it. <laughs> That was the argument he used. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite like that. <laughs> Originally, everything belongs to God. So why is that claiming it is my property? Son must know the property is part. <coughs> that is the real knowledge. Now, whatever father has given me, I will use it. Why shall I encroach upon other, my other brother, which he has got from his mother? This is good sense. But Why shall I fight with my other brother? My father has given him this property to him. So let him use that. And whatever he has given me, let me use it. Why shall I encroach upon his part? <coughs> I can understand. I'm sorry. Uh, I can understand when you say don't encroach on other people's property. Um, and I think if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is that if you have something, your father has given you something, and someone else wants to use it, well, let him. Um, I can understand that, but don't you get to the stage, or can't you get to the stage at times, that for some reason or other, you don't want him to use it. We are believing that everything belongs to God. If someone else does not believe in that concept and tries to use what we... That is wrong. That I say. That is a wrong concept. Well, how do you... How do you... Um, reconcile, or how do you... Um, work out a situation. If, if everything belongs to God, we have to run society. But you, you don't forget that everything belongs to God. Because you have to run society, it does not mean that you forget the real thing. Well, so I, I really don't object to that idea at all. But the thing is that our, the system we're working within um, has got different concepts. You should be rectified. We should be so rectified. Rectified. The system, rectified. The system yeah. should be rectified. First thing is that everyone should be convinced or understand clearly <coughs> that everything belongs to God. But they have no conception of God. That is. The whole human society at the present moment. Majority, they got less, especially the communists. They don't acknowledge the scientists, the philosophers, <coughs> the scholars, all God. But you can't say that scientists are working yes, in a way yes. that is opposite to God's yes. will. Oh yes, I met, met many scientists. They say that we, we shall solve everything by scientific and we have done already. You see that? But just because they it's are... like there is a big theory, chemical theory, one big scientist, big or small, whatever he may be, <laughs> he has got a Nobel Prize. He's <laughs> medium-sized. He's huh? medium-sized. <laughs> yeah. He is making the theory, the life has come, come from chemical. The chemical from 
chemical evolution. Darwin theory is also in that. Mm. This is the big, big scientists. They are so full that life has come from matter. Where is the proof? It's not a very good... lecture is in California University. And there was one student, his mind is happy. He challenged him that he to get the chemicals, whether he can manufacture life. That answer was, that I cannot say. What? You are putting this theory that life has come from chemical. So science means observation and experiment. Now experimental experimentally prove get the chemicals and produce a life. They try. <laughs> that is not a business. <laughs> when you are trying to be a lawyer or barrister, that doesn't mean you are barrister. When you are a student of law, you cannot say that I am barrister or I am poor. And you cannot say. You are trying to be, that is another thing. Well, that's what they try. But while they are trying to be, they are taking the position of leader. That is the misleading, that is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Andhādhatham dhai rupaniyama. One blind man is trying to lead many other blind men. What is the use of such living? But can't you have people um, doing good for the sake of goodness? He does not know what is good. But there are certain things. That's why I say blind. There are certain things which intrinsically are good. good. Real goodness is to understand God. That is real good. There, there are certain things that you don't, that are good, that you can accept as being good, just by themselves. Uh, you see an old lady who gets run over by the by a car. You go and help her. Now, there, there are certain things that are good by themselves, I think, and that people will react and do the good thing even though they mightn't have any concept of God. No. Unless you have got the real platform, how you can do good? Just like our Mother Maharaj uh, was realized to you, they have done some good legal affairs. But unless you are a lawyer, legal man, how could you do it? You have a mind to, to, to good, to do good. Uh, but if you are not a lawyer, how could you do it? But there would be a lot of lawyers that, that do that good. That is not God. Thing. I'm talking of yourself. If one does not know what is good, then how will do good? The such business is that he must know what is good. Then he can do something good. Otherwise, what is the use of jumping like monkey? So therefore, anyone who is posing himself as leader to do good to the society, he must know first of all what is good. But you should see whether you are successful and what is the standard of success. The standard of success is whether you have pleased God. You read this? What is it? Atta Pungbi Dija Sreshta. Atta Pungbi. Atta Pungbi Dija Sreshta. I know that much. O best among the twice-born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging his, pre- his prescribed duties, dharma, 
according to caste divisions and order of life is to plead, please the Lord, Hari. That is it. That should be it. So, uh, when that by my profession, by my business, by my talent, by my capacity, there are different categories. Whether I have pleased God, then it is it. India is still, if one has very good garden <coughs> and flowers, <coughs> if somebody goes, sir, I want to take some flowers from your garden for worshiping God, yes, you can take. They will be very glad. This man, his livelihood depended on those flowers. And I don't, I think he, uh, his possessions were more important to him, unfortunately. It's a funny story. There's a funny follow up to that one, and that is that um, the flowers were taken from two men that ran nurseries. And um, we had to go through an appeal finally to get home. But just before, the appeal came on. Uh, the boys needed a glass house because they've got special plants which you've got outside here. And they didn't know anything about glass houses, so they're driving around. And one said, well, let's go and find out something about glass houses. Oh, there's a nice nursery. <laughs> 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 the car drives up, you see. <laughs> and he said, uh, excuse me, sir, but we're interested in glass houses. He said, will you please get out of my land? Say nursery. <laughs> out of 200 nurseries around the area, he picked that particular one. <laughs> The Shasti Bhakti, Bhagavati Akinchana, Sarvai Gunai Tattva Samasati Sura, Harava Bhaktasya Kuto Mahaduguna, Mano Rathena Asato Dhavati Vahi. The <coughs> meaning is that anyone who is God conscious, devotee, he has got all the good qualities. What we consider as good qualities. He has not. And similarly, one who is not a devotee of God, he has no good quality. Because he will hover on the mental platform. There are different platforms. Bodily concept of life, general, and this body. Therefore, my business is to satisfy the senses. This is bodily concept of life. <coughs> and others, they are thinking, I am not this body, I am mind. So they are going on mental speculation, like philosophers, thoughtful men. And above that, <coughs> there is interim class of men practicing some yoga. And spiritual platform is above that. First bodily concept, gross, then mental, then intellectual, then spiritual. <clears throat> so this Krishna consciousness movement is on the spiritual platform above body, mind, and intelligence. But actually we should come to that platform because we are spirit soul. We are neither this body, nor this mind, nor this intelligence. So uh, one who is on the platform of spiritual consciousness, uh, they have got everything intelligence, proper use of mind, proper use of the body. 
Okay, the everything is there. He must be at the same time, although he is hero, he must be generous. Just like Alexander the Great, perhaps you know the story, he arrested one thief. So when he was arrested and he was being judged by Alexander, the thief pleaded that what is the difference between you and me? You are a great thief, I am a small thief. <laughs> so he, Alexander understood it and got him with his yes. <laughs> this is generosity. He must agree to the principle. Well, there's another one, the battle. Remember the big battle mm. where the opposition, what was his name, was on the ground? Mm. And he said, Abhimaya was surrounded by the Maharathis. There was no mercy then. So now Ghana was uh, objecting that uh, you, you cannot uh, shoot a man if he gets off his chariot. And Krishna said there was no mercy with Abhimanu, so therefore there will be no mercy now. Did for that. But where was, <laughs> where was the generosity then? Now what? That is happening. Did for that. Was that generosity? Or? Huh? Was that, where was no. the generosity? That just times Wally, surely, it's times <laughs> That is war tactics. Yeah. That is war tactics. He's going to bring some prasadam to you. Okay. Give some prasadam for them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We invited everyone over to one, uh, Ugasrava's house one night. We had a big party and Wally came and Raymond came and they, they became very much addicted to prasadam. <laughs>